Can you guys hear that? What is that? That thing over there, it's coming straight for us. Our top story tonight is reports of an earthquake happening in Azeroth. At this point, we're not quite sure what's causing it just yet, but reports are claiming it's one of the biggest disasters since Deathwing. Let's go over to our expert in the field who can hopefully tell us more. This is without a doubt the worst earthquake we've ever seen in our lifetime, shattering all records, coming in at a 10.1 on the Richter scale, and it seems to all be caused by that, that giant thing over there. I'm speechless. All I can say is, Azeroth, get ready for the biggest meta shakeup you've ever seen. Welcome guys, patch 10.1 is here and it's fair to say Blizzard are looking to shake up the arena meta with some crazy new additions. One of which is so drastic, it's going to change the sheer foundations of arena as we know it today. So sit back, relax, and get ready for us to show you the most important new talents and abilities hitting arena in patch 10.1. Before we get into it though, with Dragonflight Season 2 on the horizon, it's the perfect time to get a head start in your competition. And to do so, nothing's better than our brand new Know Your Enemy Master in Minutes course over on our website, skillcap.com. So while you wait for the new season to start, you can learn everything you need to start off right. That's not all though, as every week we release brand new arena commentaries where rank 1 players teach you how to win in even the trickiest of matchups. Seems too good to be true? Well don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted. But now, back to the video. Starting off with one of the classes getting some of the most exciting changes in 10.1, we've got shamans. Burrow is a new PvP talent being made available to all three specs of Shaman, added in attempts to solve a very common issue that all three specs have dealt with. When used, Burrow will cause the Shaman to dive underground and become unattackable, in addition to removing all slows or roots and increasing movement speed by 50% for 5 seconds. Then after that 5 seconds, the Shaman will resurface, knock all enemies into the air and deal some minor damage. This addition is huge for shamans as essentially this acts as an immunity similar to something like Ice Block or Divine Shield. So especially for Elemental and Restoration, it now provides them with a solid answer defensively when being focused down by melee and will for sure be a heavily utilized PvP talent for all three specs come 10.1. Restoration Shamans are also getting access to Static Field Totem, previously only available to DPS specs. This should be a welcome niche addition to aid in yourself or your team kiting in certain matchups, especially when combined with Totemic Projection. Between Static Field Totem, Unleashed Shield, and Thunderstorm, it's going to feel a lot like you've loaded up 3D Pinball when facing a Shaman. Enhancement has had a rough time so far in Dragonflight, but this is all set to change come 10.1, with both Static Accumulation and Thorm's Invocation being slightly changed to now interact with Chain Lightning. This then paired up alongside the PvP talent Ride the Lightning, and the potential for wearing the 4 set tier piece is having shocking effects and making for some ridiculously high voltage builds. One talent that has had Enhancement Shamans weak at the knees is the newly added Stormweaver. Historically, Enhancement Shamans in PvP rarely ever get to use their Maelstrom for anything other than healing. But now, when selecting Stormweaver, every time you spend Maelstrom on a damaging ability, you'll then be able to also use a healing surge straight after. Essentially, making it so that you no longer have to choose between doing damage or healing with your Maelstrom, and instead get to do both. Elemental is also getting what can be classed as a minor rework, with the current must-have talent of Control of Lava being redesigned. As now, in addition to the damage of Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, and Lava Burst being improved, instead of Flame Shock ticking faster, Lava Surge just has a static 100% chance to trigger. Not only that, but the cast time of either Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt are reduced up to 50%. This is in the attempts to promote a more lightning based shaman build where instead of just flame shock and lava burst, you now utilize lightning spells that were previously only ever used in PvP alongside Stormkeeper. Oh and don't worry as the previous pseudo dispel protection from control of lava is now baked into flame shock by default. All specs of Druid are also set to get some very cool new additions. Even in the earliest iterations of Arena, the one standout weakness of Restoration Druid has always been how vulnerable they are to purge effects. This is now set to change as finally Restoration Druids are getting a way to deal with it, thanks to the newly reworked Reactive Resin. This will cause any target who removes a healing over time effect on either yourself or a teammate to suffer a 30% slow, and after 3 consecutive purges will then be rooted and silenced for 3 seconds. Although this won't prevent purging altogether, it does mean that players will no longer be able to just hold the button down spam purging. 
hopefully providing just enough time for you to be able to recover. Another rather neat change for both Restoration and Balanced Druids are the buffs to Master Shapeshifter. Previously, this was a talent rarely ever taken by Restoration and unavailable to Balance, but in 10.1 might now prove to be a viable pickup as alongside the benefits of utilizing other forms being improved. You'll now also get additional mana or astral power depending on your spec when making use of other forms. It would definitely be interesting if this has a large impact and cat or owl weaving becomes meta, as it definitely plays well into the druid class fantasy. But realistically, outside of cat weaving as a restoration druid being a more viable option in something like 2v2, this talent probably won't see as much play as we'd hoped. Balanced druids are also getting further dispel protection to prevent their damage over time effects being dispelled with the rework of the PvP talent Dying Stars. Previously, all this did was grant a small amount of astral power whenever Moon or Sunfire were removed. Now though, when removed, will cause the target to take 15% additional damage from these two dots for 12 seconds. And if the target is already taking 15% extra damage, half of the duration of the Moonfire or Sunfire will be added onto the Dispeller. Just at an early look, this doesn't seem overly strong, but may still pose a much better answer alongside Stellar Flare to combat healers spam spelling. Back in the day, Feral Druids once had access to Claws of Shervala, a talent that allowed them to cast Cyclone while still remaining inside of cat form. Before you get your hopes up, no this isn't coming back, but Ferals are getting the next best thing, as with the addition of the new PvP talent Wild Attunement, casting a successful Cyclone will now put you immediately into cat form and cause your next finisher to also apply Feral Frenzy. This definitely promotes a more setup based playstyle that many Ferals have been searching for and should go on to be a key talent pickup for compositions like FMP or Jungle. Killing a hunter's pet and watching them be forced to either aimlessly run around in an attempt to summon it back is now a thing of the past. As with 10.1, one overlooked change is that Revive Pet is now physical rather than a spell, meaning you're no longer at risk of being interrupted, alongside also casting 0.5 seconds faster. Uh, we're not too sure what to think about this one, but I guess Beast Mastery was just slightly too challenging to play and had far too much counterplay involved. Not. On top of this change, another new addition this time unique to survival is the rework of Sticky Tar, which has now turned the PvP talent from a melee attack speed slow to an AoE disarm. Sticky Tar Bomb will now immediately disarm your target for 4 seconds, and then bounce to nearby enemies disarming them for 4 seconds as well. I guess between Steel Trap, Scatter Shot, Diamond Ice, and Entrapment, Melee were just having way too much uptime when facing survival hunters, so this should help to tone some of that down. Speaking of dealing with melee, Warlocks are also getting a new anti-melee feature with the addition of the new PvP talent Impish Instincts available for all three specs. This rather simple yet effective PvP talent will cause the cooldown on Demonic Circle to be reduced by 2 seconds when victim to any physical damage, with an ICD of 5 seconds. Without a doubt, this is bound to be something all three specs are going to be utilizing when facing cleaves, as combined alongside Soul Burn and Demonic Gateway will greatly aid in your ability to kite and avoid damage against some of the toughest matchups. All three specs will also be getting another new PvP talent called Soul Rip. This is a bit of a weird one, but when used, will draw a soul out of up to three targets in a 20 yard radius, reducing all targets damage done and healing received until they pick up their soul, at which point the debuff will be removed. Having any form of healing reduction effect or even just forcing opponents to stay out in the open could potentially be huge for Affliction Warlock, but whether or not this PvP talent ends up having any practical use is yet to be seen. Early looks at 10.1 had Priest players foaming at the mouth, with teases of talents like Absolute Faith attaching what seems like Spirit Link to your Leap of Faith. But a lot like when your parents told you that you can't get a certain fast food chicken place because you have to have it at home, only to then get home and proceed to open a pack of frozen tendies, Blizzard in the same effect said, we have Absolute Faith at home. And what we got is this, a talent that makes Leap of Faith grip up to three allies on top of you within 40 yards and shields both them and yourself. Theoretically, this could have some good uses. So in a coordinated RMP, you could do your setup and have the priest grip you both back the pillar immediately after instead of running. In practice, more than likely how your solo shuffle healer will use this instead is that they'll grip you and your teammate into a triple crowd control, or grip you in to help share some massive cleave damage. Greater Fade, as we know, was removed in Dragonflight for all priest specs, but 10.1 brings, well, Greater Fade back. Or, well, what can only be described as Greater Fade's deformed cousin. As when talented phase shift will cause your fade to allow you to immune all damage or crowd control for one second. Will this be used? 
potentially, but with Fade already being useful for providing a damage reduction or slow removal, this talent compared to other options just seems very lackluster. On the topic of lackluster, Devastation Evokers after a week showing in Season 1 are getting quite a few changes come 10.1. It's too early to say yet if these among the few other changes they're getting will be enough to cause them to soar out of the bottom of our tier list, but that's information for a later video. As we're looking at new talents, not balance changes. So how does this sound? Picture Ice Wall, but this time it's on fire and walking through it does damage. I present to you Divide and Conquer. This PvP talent will cause your deep breath to create two firewalls either side of your deep breath. Much like Ice Wall or Smoke Bomb, this is terrain, and enemies outside of the Deep Breath Zone will not be able to interact with those inside and vice versa. And in entering or leaving the radius, the target will take fire damage. Overall, pretty neat, and with how reliant Devastation is on Deep Breath, this just adds even more power to the ability. The most exciting change of the patch comes to mages, with the newly added PvP talent of Master Shepherd, which is said to be available for all three mage specs. Now, you're probably looking at this thinking, okay, so some added versatility and movement speed when somebody is sheeped, so what's so exciting about that? Well, the crazy part about this talent is the second paragraph, where now Polymorph and Mass Polymorph no longer heal enemies. This single-handedly shakes up the entire mage rogue dynamic. As even prior to this talent being a thing, a play top mages would make is to sheep the kill target in order to set up. Now though, imagine playing rogue mage. You can do a setup onto a healer, then just polymorph them three times while you wait for stun DRs to return. This just seems absolutely bonkers. The other new PvP talent available to all three specs is Ethereal Blink. This applies a slow to all enemies that you blink through and also reduces the cooldown by five seconds for each target you go through. And currently, yes, this does work on pets. Overall, just a cool talent that could potentially be picked up in certain matchups where you're relying on kiting to survive. As for spec specific talents, Klepto for Arcane is getting a rework, making the ability now a channel that steals a buff every 0.5 seconds. This could be situationally good, but overall a pretty big nerf. Whereas Frost gets a brand new talent in the form of Icy Feet, making it so that whenever your Frost Nova or Pet Nova is dispelled, you'll gain Snare Immunity for 3 seconds. This could see some play in niche matchups, but overall doesn't look that great. Both Mistweaver and Windwalkers are also getting a new PvP talent each. Mistweavers are gaining access to Zen Spheres, a talent that enables you to put a sphere on both an ally and an enemy. The Sphere of Hope will provide extra healing onto the target you use it on. Then the Sphere of Despair will cause an enemy to deal 10% less damage to you in addition to taking 10% damage from all sources. We think this potentially could see some play, as especially when combined with the damage increase of Mystic Touch, will further cement Mistweavers as one of the most favorable melee cleave healers. Windwalkers, on the other hand, get Storm Spirit Strikes, a super cool looking ability on paper, providing you with a clone reminiscent of Storm Earth and Fire whenever you hit two or more targets with Fist of Fury. While good in theory, the issue with this is that it can proc on pets, and as you can't choose who it attacks, it can often just be useless damage. That being said, the idea of swapping the Storm Earth and Fire and putting the clones on an off target alongside Storm Spirit Strikes does sound like a lot of fun. Another massive change coming up to Rogues that will surely shake up WoW Arena as we know it is the rework of Veil of Midnight, taking the PvP talent from completely useless to one of the most overpowered talents we've seen in a long time. When picking this up, it essentially turns Cloak of Shadows into Evasion, meaning against strictly physical damage compositions, you can have Evasion, Cloak, and Vanish to rotate through, greatly aiding in Rogue's survivability against these types of compositions. And alongside the 100% dodge chance, even more importantly, Cloak will now also remove any physical buffs, so that's things like a Monk's Karma or an Assassination Rogue's Death Mark. Caster players across the globe are shaking in their boots after seeing the new Warrior PvP talent rebound. This takes spell reflection and amps it up to the extreme, now causing the ability to reflect two spells rather than one, making it a lot more reliable for warriors and more annoying to deal with for casters. Not to mention the damage of reflected spells will also deal 50% more now, so come 10.1 you better make sure not to Chaos Bolt or Glacial Spike whenever this is ready. Last but not least, we've got Death Knights, who are set to get some love in 10.1. This comes in the form of a brand new PvP talent aimed at helping resolve some of Death Knight's inherent weaknesses when dealing with physical damage dealers. Bloodforged Armor will now cause your Death Strike to reduce all physical damage by 20%, which should end up being a must-have talent whenever dealing with this type of damage. Then Spell Warden is also getting a redesign, changing the PvP talent from empowering the rune of the same name to now making Anti-Magic Shell a shorter cooldown and usable on allies, with the drawback of lasting half the duration. 
but the ability to give AMS to allies to either immune CC or help them survive seems like an interesting new prospect. And if you want to gain rating come next season, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We've got hundreds of guides designed by the best players in WoW that teach you every fundamental needed to rank up fast. These now include user reviews, where rank 1 gladiators and pro players break down your gameplay. These are added to our massive library of arena commentaries, where you can learn the secret strategies and advanced tips needed to crush the competition in Dragonflight. We make it our commitment to make sure you gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. That's because our guides are proven to work, and if they don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. And as always, thank you all for watching, and from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great day.